What's up guys, today on Dirt Lifestyle we are finally gonna start the Underrated Overlander series and I cannot be more excited. My son is gonna be three next summer so we're gonna be doing some overlanding, it'll be his first wheeling trips, stuff like that. And I know it's only fall but I can't wait to get this discovery ready so we can start wheeling it and enjoying it off road. I'm also gonna be doing the Liberty but the Liberty will come a little bit later on only because it's still my wife's daily driver. We have a very new baby so we wanna make sure that it's easy for her to get the baby in and out of there and I can't have it down for very long while I'm working on it. The back door of this discovery is a nice big blank canvas and I wanna build something cool. I wanna create some kind of a overlander's camp kitchen in the back of this thing. So what I wanna have is a cook surface. I wanna have a prep surface. Um, I've got this huge door to work with. So I've got a lot of other things that I wanna to mount to it. We're gonna see if I can spice it up and make it look cool at the same time. I don't know. I have a basic plan in my head and I have the basic materials to get started, but I bet you this thing's gonna evolve and change as we go through the process. A lot of the tools and gear that you're gonna see in this video will be located in an Amazon link that's in the description. So if there's something you see that you're curious about, if you click on that link, you're gonna be able to find it in there. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I'm a huge fan of aluminum. So I'm gonna be using aluminum for this project. It's lightweight, we don't have to paint it, and it's very easy to work with. We have a two foot by four foot chunk right here that is 3 16 that I just picked up from the metal yard yesterday. And then I have these scrap pieces that are from uh, my rear fender build. If you guys saw that, this is just leftover material from whenever I built the rear fenders for that Jeep over there. If you haven't seen that, I'll put a link in the description if it's something you're interested in. Before we get started with the aluminum, I wanna cut a nice big cardboard template. I'm gonna cut this with my plasma cutter, but you don't have to have a plasma cutter in order to cut aluminum. You can cut this with all kinds of stuff. If you have a jigsaw, if you have a skill saw, that stuff all cuts aluminum really well. I have a plasma cutter, so why not? Perfect. Now I'm gonna mount this using what's called rib nuts. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of them, but some of you haven't. So we're gonna go over what they are. I finally got a rib nut tool instead of just using the cheater tool. So we're gonna mount this the professional way. This tool is pretty slick. That squishes one of these into a rivet. The inside of this rivet is threaded. It's probably gonna be kind of hard to see in the camera, but it's threaded. So there's a whole bunch of different heads. You put whichever head you want on there. This one is a quarter by 20, because that's what I use the most of. You're gonna thread this on there. We're gonna drill out a hole into the door of the Land Rover, and then whenever we squish this, it's gonna make that explode out, and it'll make it to where we have a nice solid connection so we can thread our hardware into it. The reason I wanted to drill this aluminum panel out first is so we had a template. Now all we need to do is add one, one hole, now that we've added this hole, we have a good starting point. The first hole is drilled to the size of our hardware. The second hole is gonna be drilled to the size of the riv nut. We're gonna put the riv nut in there. With stainless hardware, I always like to use a little bit of anti-seize just to make sure it doesn't get seized up in there. Even brand new hardware will get seized up on you if you let it. So once we secure this first piece of hardware, it'll make it to where this is secure enough for us to drill all the rest of our holes. It's 
All right, one down, 30 some to go. So this tool turns one of these into one of these. It's very simple. You just squish it like that and then it makes it like implode and fold upon itself as you can see there. Hopefully that's focused enough that you can see it. I've got these mounted in the door and now I can put the panel back on. That sounds really good. It sounds solid. There's no rattles or anything, which is definitely something that I was concerned about. I'll be putting some foam strips behind it that are sticky on one side that uh, you saw on the table over there, just to make sure a rattle doesn't develop over time. But for now, everything sounds great, which is, which is awesome. Now we're ready for the next step, which is gonna be to cut our cook surface and cut our prep surface. Um, I have a couple different hinges and some latches and stuff that we've gotta fit in there. So I'm gonna have to kind of plan all that out as I'm going to make sure everything's gonna fit, but it shouldn't be too hard. This is one of the hinges we're gonna be using right here. And this is one of the latches we're gonna be using right here. They're both very small, but it's something that should be more than strong enough for this lightweight aluminum. And even when you put pots and pans and everything else on top of it, I think this will hold up just fine. be using these hinges in a manner that they're not really made for. Now they are made to do this, but these aren't designed to be offset 3 16ths of an inch. So that's not a big deal. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some little spacers that are gonna match the same thickness as this and the same width as that. And I'm just gonna tack weld them with my TIG torch onto this base plate here. If you are following along because you wanna build something like this and you do run into a situation where you need to stick aluminum together, you don't need a TIG torch to do that. I actually have a video that I will put a link to in the description and it shows you how to stick aluminum together with this rod called Alumaloy. It works better than you would think, at least it worked better than I would think. And for this kind of application, I would say it's perfect. But for me, I own a TIG torch, so I'm definitely gonna take advantage. These Amazon hinges came with a bunch of teeny tiny hardware. So I'm not gonna be able to use a nut on the back side clearly, which is no big deal. So we're gonna use a tap. I found the right size thread, I believe. <laughs> I'm 99% sure I did. And so I'm gonna drill into these little spacers we made. I'm gonna tap the holes and then we can just take and run our hardware right into this plate. We have functional hinges and we have functional latches. That's exciting. Now we need to limit these in some way because that's probably like, I don't know, 150 degrees and we need about a 90. So we want it to stop about there. I've got this uh, stainless steel wire and I bought it with, you know, not sure how I was gonna route it or anything and I'm still not sure. But the plan is gonna be to use these little uh, odds and ends that comes with the wire. We're gonna crimp it down ourselves, cut it ourselves, and hopefully make some sort of a limiting strap to limit this to a 90. If you've never messed with braided steel wire before, it's really simple. All you need to do is put one of these, uh, I believe these are called collets if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've played with this stuff. You just slip it over the line. Now we are gonna take our crimpers and crimp it. And you're done, very simple. Now I'm gonna take this bad boy and I already pre-tapped some holes. I did a little bit of layout and I'm gonna thread this in there. I need to give it a perfect 90 right here and I'll secure it to the bottom part of this work surface.
as you saw, I added a couple odds and ends. I did add a beer opener. I think this bear style beer opener is pretty badass, so I had to have it. And then I added a paper towel dispenser because you need some paper towels and stuff in your kitchen, I think. I also added a flashlight up here at the top with some little flashlight holders. Those are both things that, you know, I got all of this on Amazon, but those are both things off Amazon that are not sold together, but they look like they're about the right size. So I ordered them both and luckily they both fit together. So I have a nice layer of rubber insulating the flashlight from the mounts, making it to where it'll stay quiet. That's kind of the concept of all this stuff is when I'm going down the road, I don't want it to rattle. So the flashlight falls into that category, just like everything else. Now I need to modify this thing to have a cook top. At the beginning of the video, you saw a little burner on the table and now we need to modify this in a way to accept that burn. I haven't seen this done before, but what I'd like to do is make this a modular burner, meaning that I wanna be able to take it in and out of the door. I wanna make sure that it's not something that's permanently mounted here. Whenever I close this up, I don't wanna have a burner hanging out of the back first off, and I wanna make it to where if I wanna move this and cook next to a fire, I can't. So what I'm gonna do is just cut a hole that's gonna be smaller than the outside diameter of this burner, but larger than the inside diameter of the circle, so I can just screw a propane tank to it, and drop it in the hole. And whenever I'm done using it, pull it out of the hole, pack it down, put it back in my camping supplies. I'm gonna take a plasma cutter, I'm gonna cut a hole in this, and we're gonna give it a shot. Check it out, the surface is not hot. I put my hands right on it. It's barely warm. I'm surprised at how cool it's staying. And this is ice cold. This is the same temperature as the rest of the shop. So nothing's getting hot around it, which is definitely very good. Well, I'd like to say that the tailgate was a success. This tailgate's not done, believe it or not. I would like to add power back there so I can charge that flashlight whenever I want. So 12 volt power source. I also would like to add a switch for a light that I wanna put at the top of the door. So if I'm cooking and it's dark out, I can see what I'm doing. So there's some little things I wanna add here and there. And I do have a fire extinguisher for this bad boy. I know a few people are gonna be commenting about that. Um, I plan on mounting two in the back of the Land Rover. I would say don't cook on a vehicle you don't have a fire extinguisher for, for sure. So if you plan on you know, building something like this and you wanna cook in the back of it, I would definitely suggest getting a fire extinguisher. Thank you very much for sticking around to the very end of this video to watch me enjoy my delicious steak and beer. And if you wanna see more stuff like this and you're new to the channel, I've got a whole bunch of content. Um, this can be coming out for this Land Rover. I've got content for Jeeps and all kinds of different stuff that's 4x4 related. If you wanna support Dirt Lifestyle, make sure you give the video a thumbs up and you can check out our website. We have different Dirt Lifestyle um, t-shirts, hats, things like that. And we also have a Patreon page. If you wanna follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.